top 10 secret government operations that don't officially exist. What's going on guys? Welcome back to IO. I'm your host Jared Bronstein and today we're going to be talking about the top 10 secret government operations that don't officially exist or at one point didn't exist. This includes secret US prisons also known as black sites, a planned attack against America by the American government and a secret railroad. As always you guys got to be sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. Drop a comment down below with your thoughts on all of this at the end of the video and let's get into this one. Starting off the list at number 10, Porton Down, England. Although the UK government has confirmed the base does exist, what actually goes on inside is a big question mark. The base originally opened during World War One and was meant to be used as an experimental base for testing chemical weapons. Since its opening, the purpose for the base has changed quite a lot. Starting off as an experimental base for chemical weapons, it turned into a chemical defense experimental establishment as well as a microbiological research establishment run by the Ministry of Defense and Department of Health. Say that fast 10 times. I had trouble saying it once. In 1979, the base was officially split into two separate controlled locations, one controlled by the Ministry of Defense and the other by the Health Department. However, it's been reported that experiments on both animals and humans have taken place and in 2008, the Ministry of Defense paid 360 war veterans $3 million each after three vets accused the Ministry of Defense with giving them LSD without their knowledge. That's some pretty... Ugh. Although the Ministry paid out, they never actually admitted that they performed the tests. But I mean, like, why pay so much money if you're innocent? It's believed today that they have scientists carrying out research into chemical weapons and deadly diseases such as Ebola and the plague. But who really knows? Do you? In at number 9, detention site Green. In 2002, Abu Zubaydah, who was believed to be one of Osama bin Laden's top lieutenants, was arrested and taken to detention site Green in Thailand. It's believed it was located inside the Royal Thai Air Force, based in Utani, and although it's been denied by US and Thai officials in the past, the base was shut down in 2002 and 92 taped recordings of interrogations that were apparently stored there have been destroyed. Something here is not adding up. I mean, this seems kind of odd if you ask me. It's believed Abu was tortured on site and was the first CIA prisoner to undergo what they call enhanced measures, aka torture. He was slammed against a wall, stuffed into a coffin like box, and waterboarded, as well as deprived of sleep for almost a month straight before being relocated to Guantanamo Bay, where it's believed he still currently is. And number eight, Operations Northwoods. This is actually some pretty scary stuff. In 1962, the US Department of Defense and Joint Chiefs of Staff came together and proposed the CIA or other government officials commit acts of terrorism against their own only to blame the Cuban government in hopes of justifying a war. The operation proposed included hijackings, bombings of US ships, as well as real or simulated actions against the US military and civilians. The documents, which have since been released in 2001, stated, I quote, the desired resultant from the execution of this plan would be to place the United States in the apparent position of suffering defensible grievances from a rash and irresponsible government of Cuba, and to develop an international image of a Cuban threat to peace in the Western Hemisphere, end quote. So yeah, pretty much the US government wanted to attack the Americans on American soil and then blame Cuba. That's, oh, that's bad. Thankfully, President at the time, John F. Kennedy, rejected the proposals and removed the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who signed off on the documentation before sending it to the US Secretary of Defense in hopes of approval. And thankfully, it never went through, as obviously you guys know. At lucky number seven, we got Mount Yamantu. Located in Bash, Kortost in Russia, Yamantu is the highest mountain in the southern Ural and is believed to be a nuclear facility or a military bunker. US satellites have been able to confirm that large excavation projects have taken place in the 1990s, but not much else is known about it. Although the US government has asked Russia what the deal is, the Russian government has provided a handful of different answers. A mining site, a repository for Russian treasures, a bunker for leaders of the country in case of a nuclear war. It seems the actual operations going down are a big question mark. We got a lot of answers here. It's just, you know. Consistency, man. But an official response from Russia reads, I quote, the practice does not exist in the defensive ministry of Russia of informing foreign mass media about facilities, whatever they are, that are under construction in the interests of strengthening the security of Russia. So, whatever that means. Number six, Area 51. I mean, are you guys really surprised that it's on the list? But we're not gonna talk about the raid or so much what's going on in there because we only know what they tell us. And I say that because Although many believe there is some sort of extraterrestrial life forms being tested on inside Area 51, the government has stood by their claims that it is a testing facility for the US Air Force, which is fine. 
But what I don't understand is why they kept the base a secret for so many years. Although the site at Groom Lake was originally established in 1955, the US government didn't officially acknowledge the existence of Area 51 until June 25th, 2013, when the CIA released an official history of the U-2 and Oxcart projects, two of the many projects that have happened at the top secret base. And this was in response to a Freedom of Information Act request submitted in 2005 by Jeffrey T. Reichelson of George Washington University's National Security Archive. So it seems like they are trying to hide the fact that the base existed in the first place, which gets me wondering what's really going on in there. At number 5 we got US Naval Base Diego Garcia. Originally an island inhabited by around a thousand Chagossians, the US and UK government agreed it would be a great location for a US Naval Base. So after removing the entire population, construction would begin in hopes of the US government having a US Navy base to operate out of during the Cold War. However, reports in 2015 from Lawrence Wilkerson, a former chief of staff to a now retired United States Secretary of State, claims the CIA used the facilities at Diego Garcia to detain war criminals. He claimed three US intelligence sources told him the site was used as, I quote, a transit site where people were temporarily housed, let us say, and interrogated from time to time. What I heard was more along the lines of using it as a transit location when perhaps other places were full or other places were deemed too dangerous or insecure or unavailable at the moment. End quote. On July 31st, 2008, an unnamed former White House official alleged that the United States had imprisoned and interrogated at least one suspect on Diego Garcia during 2002 and possibly 2003. However, both the UK and US government have never confirmed anything of this sort ever happened. Coming in at number 4, Project MK Ultra. This has been a lot of movies and TV shows, but. What actually went down is really messed up. The project was created to try and pretty much brainwash humans. The CIA used human subjects to experiment with the likes of LSD, hypnosis, sensory deprivation, isolation, and other forms of torture to see if they could have complete control over the human mind. Although Project MK Ultra was first brought to the attention of the public in 1975, it's believed in 1973 CIA director at the time, Richard Helms, ordered all documentation to be destroyed. Why would he want to do that? In 1977, a Freedom of Information Act led to around 20,000 documents being released, pertaining to the secret operation. More information was released in 2001, and in December of 2018, declassified documents included a letter to an unidentified doctor discussing work on six dogs made to run, turn, and stop via remote control and brain implants. Wow, that's. That's a little uncomfortable. How do you guys feel about that? At number 3, we got Raven Rock Mountain Complex, located near Blue Ridge Summit, Pennsylvania. It's also referred to as an underground pentagon and has emergency operations centers for the US Army, Navy, and Air Force. Originally meant to be built as a housing facility for officials in case of a nuclear war or attack during the Cold War, it's believed to this day the site still has supplies and equipment that can last 30 days after a nuclear attack, and apparently there is weather monitoring technology used by Air Force One at the location. But it seems US government officials are extremely secretive about what's going on down there, and there may be only one way to find out. We should start a Facebook group and storm the underground pentagon. I'm just kidding. I shouldn't say these things on camera, but let it be known on camera that it's a joke. Seriously, I'm not I'm not even doing this for laughs. Like, uh, this is a joke. At number two, Area 6, a top secret government base located in Nevada, about 12 miles northeast of Area 51. You can actually see it from a tour bus on the highway, and its security isn't as tight as Area 51. It's surrounded by fences, of course, and has security checkpoints. But from what is known, they do aircraft tests for federal agencies, such as the Department of Defense and Homeland Security. It's believed the base itself was built sometime in the 1950s for $9.6 million, and it's believed it was previously used for underground nuclear testing. Approximately four nuclear tests and six detonations happened between the 1950s and 1992. In 2005, a 5,000 foot runway was built, but it's so low key, no one really knows about it, and it technically doesn't have an official name. Who knows what's really going on down there? Maybe we should storm Area 6. Joking again. This is like, it's, it's a total joke. All right? Just to get that on camera, I'm kidding. Coming in at lucky number one. Is that a lucky number? I don't know, but it's Metro number two. At number one, we got Metro two. It's the informal name given for a secret underground subway system and city believed to be built during Stalin's time. When it was codenamed D6, although many government officials have claimed in the past that there's only a single railway, everything down there was old or deteriorated, it's believed it was actually quite large. In 1991, the US Department of Defense published a report explaining there's an underground city below Moscow and outside, connected by subway lines as a quick escape for the leader. It is very important to mention Joseph Stalin at the time was very worried about being assassinated, so it could be possible that it was made specifically just for him, you know, just to have like a quick escape route in case someone tried to kill him. However, it's believed the railroad connects the Kremlin to Federal Security Service headquarters, the government airport, an underground town, and other locations. So why? And why are they lying about how big it is? Maybe they're not. I don't know. Only one way to find out, guys. 
I'm not even saying it. And that's all for this one, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. You guys gotta be sure to subscribe, drop a comment down below with your thoughts on all these crazy places, and give the video a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed it. If you guys wanna storm or raid any of these places to find out if they're real, let me know in the comments down below. I'll join you, no problem. You guys can find me on social media at Bronze7, and we'll see you in the next one.